What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and when the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial was over, a lot of Johnny Depp fans got together, they created a money pool, they all pitched in a few dollars so they could pay for access to a lot of the unsealed documents from the trial. But you want to know what I noticed? I didn't see any Amber Heard fans doing the same thing. Isn't that weird? Surely, if they believe that Amber is innocent and that this was all a scheme to take down Amber, then surely they would want to see these unsealed documents just as much as anyone else. But that just wasn't the case. I noticed tons of Johnny Depp fans from all walks of life coming together, pitching in a few cents, a few dollars, so we could all have access to these documents. Meanwhile, you didn't hear peep out of Amber Heard's fans and so-called supporters. Most of them are robots. But it was just weird because if y'all are so adamant about the fact that she's telling the truth and that there was so much evidence left out, then why wouldn't y'all want access to these documents just as much as Johnny fans? But it shows you that Johnny's fans were confident that Johnny didn't have anything to hide, while, Amber, while Amber's fans were hesitant you know, they didn't want to look into these unsealed documents because they thought it maybe would make her look even worse. Now, of course, once these documents got unsealed, Amber Heard's fans were all over it, trying to nitpick whatever they can to make Johnny look bad. The main thing they decided to run with was the fact that Johnny may possibly have a hard time getting it up. Let's just say that. And I thought that was childish. I just thought it was just middle school level bullying. I just didn't feel like we need to take it there. Johnny's a damn near 60 year old man. Half of the people that are involved in this whole situation are older as well. We should all be mature enough not to sit here and crack jokes about Johnny's dingling. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't even want to get into that conversation. But the other thing these people are hyper focusing on is this text message exchange between Johnny and Marilyn Manson because they're acting as if this is so damning that this is, this is proof that Marilyn Manson's a monster and that he did all of the things that he's accused of doing now. I'm going to be honest with you all. I don't know Marilyn Manson like that. I don't know his work like that. I never wanted to. I don't like Marilyn Manson it's hard to say that I don't like Marilyn Manson because I don't know him and I don't really care about his work. But that's just not, he's not my type of person. You understand? Like, I'm not really into all of that stuff that he's into. And I don't think that you would have a hard time convincing me that Marilyn Manson is just this awesome, stand-up, loving, friendly guy. Because he's gone so hard to you know, portray himself as the exact opposite. So I'm not going to sit here and think that Marilyn Manson's a saint because that's just not the case. However, you know, I've been looking into this Marilyn Manson situation a little bit. I don't have a solid stance on it yet. There's still so much stuff that I need to look into, but I'm aware that he is suing Evan Rachel Wood for defamation. I'm aware that that's going to be a big case whenever it, you know, comes to fruition, but I was kind of looking into that here and there. But from what Amber's side was saying and from what the mainstream media is saying out there, it's like this text message exchange between Johnny Depp and Marilyn Manson. It's so damning. It's so bad. This not only proves that Johnny is a, a bad person, but it also proves that Marilyn Manson's guilty of everything. And Twitter picked it up and ran with it. Here's just a few of the top tweets that I see out there and none of it makes sense. Johnny Depp's defenders crowdsourcing thousands to pay to unseal new pages and text that support Amber Heard's case and outing a bunch of Marilyn Manson texts that support Evan Rachel Wood's case in the process. Sometimes fate has a sense of humor. And it's just like people are all out there acting as if these text messages are so, so bad. That this proves everything that Amber Heard and Evan Rachel Wood said was true. And then I go look at the text myself. I read through the whole conversation. Honestly, people, you can look it up. You can go read through it as well. 
I'm not going to sit here and read this whole conversation right now because it's a nothing burger. It's literally two dudes having a bro-like conversation. There's inside jokes thrown around that none of us will understand. You know, there's random gay jokes, you know. <laughs> it's just like between two friends. It's a conversation that you won't necessarily understand. When I read the conversation, it's not necessarily how I would talk to my friends. But hey, I can't sit here and say, oh, because these texts aren't the way I would text. This means these people are bad. There's no damning evidence within these texts at all to make Marilyn Manson or Johnny Depp look like they're guilty of what they were accused of. Yet that's what they're throwing out there. These texts prove everything. And like I told you all, I in no, in no way, shape or form am I interested in defending someone who is guilty of something. So I don't have any interest in defending Marilyn Manson. I don't really even like the guy. But I'm not going to sit here and lie. When I see information in front of my face, you know, I'm able to look at it and get my, you know, form my own opinion about it before other people form an opinion for me. But that's what happens. They tell you, oh, this are, these are damning texts. These are bad texts. This proves that Johnny did this and that Marilyn Manson did this. And by the time you're reading the text, you already have all of those, you know, opinions that other people put out there in your brain. So it makes you feel as if these texts are worse than what they are. But it's literally two dudes going back and forth, cracking gay jokes on each other. Like they talk about having sex and random stuff together. It's like, and spanking each other. It's like, it's weird. It's weird. And th that's how Hollywood is. I wouldn't put nothing past these people. But there's nothing in there damning about you know, Johnny Depp or Marilyn Manson. Now, a couple of the texts that they're really trying to hyper-focus on is the fact that throughout the conversation, Marilyn Manson at one point referred to one of his exes as Amber Heard 2.0. And they're acting like, oh, that's evidence. Look, he refers to her as Amber Heard 2.0. He's guilty. Open and shut case. But I'm sitting here like, what the hell is wrong with you all people? Do you not have any critical thinking skills? Obviously, if he's referring to someone as Amber Heard 2.0, he's basically saying, hey, I have a lying accuser over here who's accusing me of doing things I didn't do. This is an intimate conversation between Marilyn Manson and his supposed best friend, Johnny Depp. If he did something, he could have just told Johnny Depp, hey, you know, such and such happened between me and this woman. Maybe I did this and I did that. But no, he just says, hey, Johnny, I got an Amber Heard 2.0 on my hands. I need help. And then Johnny goes on to talk about, you know, how Amber was. And never in these conversations do they say that they did anything wrong. They're basically just talking about how they winded up being with some narcissistic psychopaths, you know, who definitely want to destroy their careers. So in multiple uh, on multiple occasions within this conversation, he refers to people as like Amber Heard. I got an Amber Heard on my hands. And at one point he asked to go and sleep at Johnny Depp's house. And all of that just, people look at it like, oh, he's going to sleep at Johnny's house. This is real bad. But the way I look at it is like, okay, if this dude was as bad as you said he was, why would he be looking for an ounce? It's kind of like with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. He always, Johnny would always separate himself from the situation. So we have right here evidence that on multiple occasions, Marilyn Manson just tried to get the hell away from his house and go chill with Johnny Depp to get away, to get away from his whole entire situation. One of the times he said that someone falsely accused him of something and told, you know, law enforcement that he had substance inside his house and he wanted to get away or whatnot. But nowhere in the messages does it show anything that would make you think Marilyn Manson's guilty or that Johnny Depp is guilty. In fact, it makes you feel the exact opposite. For one, if you want to accuse someone of being this monster that is controlling and does all of these things to you and manipulates you, and then I see examples of them trying to separate themselves from arguments and situations, I automatically start feeling iffy about it. Because 99% of the time, people who are like that, they don't try to separate themselves, okay? Not only do they not try to separate themselves from arguments, they attempt to stop you from separating yourself. 
That's what these type of people typically do. Now, of course, there's unique situations out there. I'm just saying for these people to be manipulative controllers who just are so horrible and they just, you know, exert themselves onto women and control their lives and ruin them. Why would they run away from arguments? Why would they leave their own house just to get away from having to deal with whatever craziness these women are putting them through? So this isn't enough to be like, oh, Marilyn Manson's innocent, but it's definitely nothing here to prove that Marilyn Manson is guilty. And there's nothing here to make Johnny look as if he's guilty. It's the exact opposite. It's two friends literally having a conversation about how these women are crazy and trying to take all their money and stuff and how they're narcissists and <laughs> manipulators. You know what I mean? So how Amber Heard fans and the mainstream media took this and ran with it like it was, you know, the most damning evidence in the world. And this is what we needed to take down Johnny and Marilyn Manson. It's absolutely laughable. But I continue to tell you all, the further we get away from this trial, the more nonsense is going to be put out there. People are grasping onto anything they can now. You know, there's not a big enough news story out there for them to cover. So they're going to nitpick and we're going to do whatever we can. And we're going to act like Marilyn Manson calling his ex 2.0 confirms that he did all of these things. When in fact, it confirms that he's basically saying, hey, this woman is falsely accusing me. She's just like your ex. Whatever. I never thought that I would be sitting here a day in my life defending someone like Marilyn Manson, but I am. I'm not sitting here saying that this means Marilyn Manson is innocent. I'm just saying this little stuff right here and these little headlines you're seeing, it's bogus. And when you see stuff like this, it makes you really question a lot of the other allegations. You know, it really makes you wonder, hmm, what's going on here? Now, I've looked into the Marilyn Manson situation a little bit. There's so many years worth of evidence and stuff that went on that I had no idea about that I would have to look back on. But from what I've seen, I'm, I'm still not convinced that Marilyn Manson is this great person. I think Marilyn Manson has probably done some really disturbing things with people and to people, but with their consent. What I'm starting to notice with Marilyn Manson is, yeah, he's done a lot of things that make you feel icky and, you know, makes you feel kind of weird. But then you have to realize, well, if another grown adult decided that that was OK with them, then they can't just come out 10 years later and be like, now that's not OK. You get what I'm saying here? So two things can be true at once, which is a common theme, especially with this Marilyn Manson situation. As far as I'm concerned, it's like, yeah, this is kind of creepy and off. But if these people are consenting to it, then what can I say? You know, any woman that gets with someone that looks like Marilyn Manson, you got to kind of halfway expect that they know they're getting themselves into some weird, kinky stuff. And he's done a lot of weird, kinky stuff from what I've seen. But hey, whatever. Let me know your thoughts, though, down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. And I'll talk to you all on the next video.